Hi there, I'm Dre, the host and founder of the Dragon Network, an online member-based community where health IT professionals share ideas, experiences, and collaborate with one another on all things healthcare IT. For today's video, I want to talk about the difference between data governance and data management and how those two things really work together. So before I jump in, if you haven't had a chance to subscribe to the channel yet, go ahead and do that now. And as always, as the video progresses, if you like what you see, feel free to hit that like button. So the amount of data that we are currently collecting in the health IT space is absolutely staggering. And it is going to continue to grow exponentially over time. So we need to make sure with all that data that's coming in and all that data that's being housed, that we have a very strong and solid structure in place to manage it. If we don't have structures and frameworks in place for the data, it's going to be incredibly difficult for organizations to layer on things like AI, machine learning, deep learning technologies, and all sorts of new innovations that we've yet to discover. So let's talk first about data governance. So governance is a term that we all love to hate. We know that it needs to be in place. We totally support the idea behind it, but it can be quite difficult to actually set up and to maintain over time. So what exactly is it? Well, it is the structures that are in place, the policies, the procedures, the guidelines that are in place to really tell us what data can be used, by whom, and in what situations. So it's gonna tell us who has the authority and the control over data assets that are within the enterprise. So who is actually responsible for making sure that the data is what it says it is and is accessible to the people it needs to be accessible to at the right time and in the right place. So who's got control over that? It's also going to look at things like the integrity and the security of those assets in the organizational ecosystem. Governance frameworks have the ability to layer on top of each other. So if you've got you know, data warehouses and data lakes and applications with significant amounts of data, BI tools, things like that, inside of your environment, those will need data governance around them. And then if you also have partner organizations that you're working with on a regular basis, where you're actually combining data assets, you're gonna need governance in place over that as well. So you do need to understand who has the authority and control over that data and who's gonna be setting those policies and standards in those situations and not just the ones that are internal, but that overarching if there's a partner collaboration going on. So what do you need for the governance structure? Well, you certainly need to make sure that there is a team in place that is overseeing things. You need to have a steering committee who is available to make decisions, and they may or not, may not be called a steering committee, but you need a group of people who has the ability to make decisions around the standards, policies, procedures, and structure and framework around access to the data, security of the data, and everything about the integrity and quality of that data. So you need that in place. And then you also need data stewards. So data stewards are going to be individuals who are going to make sure that all of the processes and policies that are uh, outlined by the framework or the model are going to be followed. And they're also going to make recommendations on how that governance model can evolve over time. Governance models aren't meant to be stagnant. It's not like you create it, you know, once and done, walk away. It is meant to evolve, especially as we incorporate more data assets and as we look to have more user types actually accessing and utilizing that data for different purposes. So how complex your data governance structure should be should directly correlate to how complex your IT systems are, as well as how complex the organization or the entity or the group with which you're putting governance in place for is. So now let's look at data management. So there's a description that I found on Informatica that's actually very helpful. And it states that data governance is the definition of the organizational structures the data owners, the policies, the rules, the processes, the business terms, and the metrics for the end-to-end -end life cycle of the data. Data management is the technical implementation of data governance. So let's look at that a little bit closer because of course, when you first hear that, or when I first read it for sure, it's like, what? That doesn't make sense. How can you put all these structures in place and then you have an entire separate category that is actually implementation of the structures, but they can exist on their own. So you can absolutely have data governance without data management, and you can have data management without data governance. You shouldn't, but you could. So data management is gonna take a look at the parameters that were set for what data can be used by which individuals in which scenarios, and it's gonna actually create technical rules and requirements that need to be there to support that actually happening. So what do I mean by that? So if you look at current healthcare organizations today, we have certain 
situations, actually a lot of situations, where there are data elements or data items that are repeated in different systems. So they exist in separate systems. They may or may not be replicating between the systems. If you have two sources or two systems that contain the same data elements, you need to identify as part of data management which one is your source of truth. So when the data governance structure is going to look at who can access the data when, where, and how, you need to know where that true source of data is and where you can rely on that data to be. So let's take, for example, patient allergies. Allergies are in almost every system where there is some form of patient touch, some sort of patient ingestion, or some sort of patient treatment that is involved. So you have them in lab systems, in pharmacy systems, in your main EHR. So you've got allergy information that may be all over the place. So if you have a data governance structure in place and somebody's looking for allergy data, that governance structure needs to totally understand where the source of truth is for allergies. Where is it the most comprehensive? Where is it always maintained? Where is it always up to date? And where can we rely on that data every single time? Data management is the process and procedures that are gonna be put in place to make sure that where you're defining your source of truth, so where you say allergies live and are true, so let's say the EHR, so if they're in your core EHR as true in that location and always accurate, then it is the data management structure that is responsible for making sure that is true and correct. They would look at, you know, how does allergy information flow between systems if it needs to? How does it interact if there's different sources of input? How does it get updated? So where is the truth gonna stay and how do we maintain that truth so that when the structures that are in place for data governance need to sort of call on it, then that's there. So data management is also gonna look at things like reconciliation if that data source of truth is incorrect. It's going to look at defining the terms of the data. So if you have data items, let's say lab results that are in multiple different systems, so you're uh, performing labs inside the hospital, you have labs maybe coming in externally from a third party like Quest or something like that, you need to make sure that the reference ranges are compatible and that you can compare those things. Data management processes and structures are going to help with that as well. So data management is absolutely also going to need some sort of oversight framework. So it's not that it is just that you can work off of the governance and sort of run with it and you're good. So there's going to be sort of rules in place and a structure in place at the data management level that people need to adhere to, standards that they need to follow, decision-making bodies that need to determine what the standards are. But those are at a much more tactical level and a much more hands-on type level than the data governance overarching body would be. Do you need data governance and data management within a healthcare organization? Yes. Can you have one without the other? Yes. So the easiest thing and the easiest analogy that people utilize on a regular basis, and if you Google, you'll find this analogy sort of all over the place, is the concept of building a house with or without a blueprint. So if you think of data governance as the blueprint, and the actual construction as building the house, you are much, much better off if you have a plan to follow, if you understand what you're trying to do, what goals you're trying to get to, what security and integrity and structure and quality you're looking for. Can you build a house without a plan? Sure. You can just sort of show up on the site and begin hammering wood together and see what you come up with. Will it be as good as if you have a blueprint and a plan and a structure in place and some oversight? Probably not. Can you actually have all that structure and oversight and a blueprint in place and never actually have a data management plan? You absolutely can. You're not gonna actually get where you wanna go if you do that. So you can have them separate and you can sort of uh, focus on one or the other. It is much better to have both. In the long term, when we look at AI and machine learning and deep learning and incorporating all these wearables and Internet of Things and all of the data from the disparate systems that we have, we are going to need both. I would suggest that if you're starting to look at the framework, beginning with the data governance model first is the approach that most healthcare organizations will take. But please don't underestimate the amount of time and effort it takes to understand where in your current systems all of your data lives and what the standard definition of the data item should be. That in and of itself is where a lot of people get stuck and that level of data management 
even with fabulous data governance in place, sort of will hinder you from executing. So with that high level overview of data management and data governance and how the two sort of relate to each other, I hope you can take some of that information and start to consider it for organizations that you're working in or working with as you go forward. So as always, if you want to dive deeper into some of these questions, I encourage you to check out the Dragon Network at network.dragon.com and consider joining us. There's a free trial on there for you to sign up for if you'd like, and I will see you again next week. Have a great day.